In this module, we are going to learn about the photoelectron spectroscopy of atoms. We have already learned about atomic spectroscopy. Now, it is the turn of photoelectron spectroscopy and we will start from learning outcomes. Then an introduction will be given. The experiment will be described, the photoelectron experiment. And then we will talk about X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy, also known as XPS. Then we will discuss in detail the photoelectron spectrum of argon, the effect of spin orbit coupling and the relative heights of the peaks. And then we will learn about Koopman's theorem, which blends theory with experiment. And then we will wind up with a brief summary. In this module, we shall learn about a spectroscopic technique that allows us to take a peek into energy levels and confirm different aspects of energy level ordering and Hund's rules. We have already learned about many of these concepts, but now we will see how experimental verification is done about these concepts. And then we will also learn how to interpret photoelectron spectra and identify various atoms. In this uh, module, we are going to concentrate only on atoms because we only know about the energy levels of atoms. But uh, later on, we will also learn about the photoelectron spectroscopy of molecules. Introduction In photoelectron spectroscopy, it is an extension of the photoelectric effect. The first experiment that confirmed that light consisted of quanta, Einstein's famous experiment, which allowed him to observe the emission of electrons when certain elements were bombarded with high energy radiation. He saw that there was emission of electrons when very high energy in the UV region or sometimes in the visible region also was shined on some elements. He found that there was emission of electrons. Now, this is the concept which is taken in photoelectron spectroscopy. This experiment confirmed the particular nature of radiation and the existence of photons. He also found that different alkali metals have different work functions, which is a minimum energy required to remove an electron from the outermost shell. So what he learned was that different alkali metals will start emitting electrons at different frequencies and so their work function is different and this can help us in identification of atoms. The principle of photoelectron spectroscopy is based on this uh, observation. Now we will describe the photoelectron experiment. In photoelectron spectroscopy, it is also known as PES. The atom is bombarded with high energy radiation from a helium-1 source. Now the helium-1 emission line is observed at 58.4 nanometers. Now this is a very small wavelength, so you can imagine that the energy is very, very high. The emitted photons have energy Hc by lambda. You can find out the energy by using this expression. And if you put in all the values of H, C and uh, put in the value of lambda also, which we have already said is 58.4 into 10 raised power of minus 9 meters, we find that the energy of this radiation is 3.40 into 10 raised power of minus 19 Joule. And when you convert to electron volts, this energy is equal to 21.2 electron volts. And usually we use the unit electron volt to describe ionization energies. Now when photons of this energy hit an atom, they will transfer their energy to the electrons of that particular atom. These electrons get energized because of this extra energy that they have taken and then they are able to overcome their attraction to the nucleus because the nucleus is positively charged, they are very strongly attracted to the nucleus and now with this extra energy they are able to overcome this attraction and then they can escape. If the energy of the photon is higher than the minimum energy required to escape, what we were calling the work function, then it is possible that the electron will completely leave the atom and it will escape. The remaining energy, which is the extra energy, will be converted to kinetic energy, which will be taken up by the electrons which have been emitted. So by measuring this kinetic energy of the electrons, we will be able to find out from this energy how much of it has been taken to ionize the electron. and you can find out what is the ionization energy of the electron. So the energy of the photon H nu is split into the ionization energy of the atom and also the kinetic energy of the electrons. It is something like this as shown in the figure. The entire process you can write down by writing an equation like A plus H nu A is the atom. It absorbs the frequency nu. The energy of this frequency is H nu and it will give you a positive ion which and the electron will leave the atom leaving a 
पॉजिटिव आयन ए प्लस कॉन्जर्वेशन ऑफ एनर्जी रिक्वायर्स दैट द एनर्जीज ऑन बोथ साइड शुड बी द सेम दैट मीन्स दैट द एनर्जी ऑफ द एटम प्लस द रेडिएशन शुड बी द एनर्जी ऑफ द पॉजिटिव आयन द कैट आयन दैट इज प्रोड्यूस्ड प्लस द एनर्जी ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन विच इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ कैनेटिक एनर्जी नाउ दिस लास्ट टर्म द एनर्जी ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रॉन इज ओनली कैनेटिक एनर्जी so this equation can be rearranged to the kinetic energy of the electron is equal to h nu minus within brackets energy of the cation minus the energy of the neutral atom and this term in brackets is the difference in energy between the ionized atom and the neutral atom and it is also called the binding or ionization energy of the electron in the atom so we finally have the kinetic energy is equal to h nu the energy of the radiation minus the binding energy of the electron to the atom and it is the same as we had written previously now a photo electron spectrum uh, which we have shown in figure it displays the kinetic energy distribution of the emitted photo electrons these are photo electrons because they have been excited by photo or light it is a plot of the number of emitted photo electrons as a function of their kinetic energy this can be measured using an electron energy analyzer and this figure shows us schematic photo electron spectrum where the photo electron counts how many uh, electrons have this particular kinetic energy is plotted against either the binding energy or the kinetic energy and this is a typical photo electron spectrum so if you, you want to study electrons which have binding energy which is higher than 21.2 electron volts you can use another helium emission which is called the helium 2 line and this is at 40.8 electron volts and photo electron spectroscopy studied using helium lamps with this emission falls in the domain of ultraviolet photo electron spectroscopy it is also called ups for analyzing the core electrons the inner electrons you use another technique which is called x ray photo electron spectroscopy xps and a combination of all these three methods can give you the energies the binding energies of all the electrons now we'll discuss x ray photo electron spectroscopy each element has a characteristic binding energy associated with each of its core atomic orbitals hence each element gives rise to a characteristic photo electron spectrum which can be used to identify it moreover there is a quantitative aspect to the intensity of the peaks is related to the concentration of the element in the sample so you can make out how much you have taken in the sample and how much of that particular element is present in that sample thus xps is an important technique providing both qualitative and quantitative information about the composition of a sample for this reason it is also known as esca which is an acronym for electron spectroscopy for chemical analysis and the x-ray sources that are commonly employed these are uh, magnesium k alpha radiation which has an energy of 1253.6 electron volts aluminum k alpha radiation which has an energy of 1486.6 electron volts copper k alpha radiation 5414.7 electron volts the emitted photo electrons will therefore have kinetic energies in the range of about 0 to 1250 electron volts in the first case 0 to 1480 electron volts in the second and 0 to 5410 last case and that is the copper k alpha radiation and it is able to probe the deepest electrons so now we'll discuss the photo electron spectroscopy of argon and try to understand how it can be interpreted to decipher the electronic energy levels of different atoms so we'll take up the interpretation of the photo electron spectrum of this noble gas argon since it is a noble gas it has completely filled electron shells its electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 and the ground state is therefore a closed shell and we know that a term symbol will be singlet 1s0 the 3s and 3p electrons are the valence electrons and the rest are the core electrons and helium 1 radiation can provide us information about the energies of the 3s and 3p electrons because these are the valence shell electrons and uh, in figure we have shown composite of ups and esca for obtaining information about the core electrons so it is a complete spectrum where we have also studied the core electrons and the valence electrons now let us see what happens 
Ionization of an electron results in a positively charged ion which we can write as argon plus and a dot to signify that it is a free radical it has unpaired electron having one electron less than the neutral atom. The easiest electron to remove is the 3p electron because it has the highest energy and it results in the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 and 3p5 because one of the 3p electrons has escaped. The binding energy of this electron is about 24 electron volts. The next easily ionizable electron is the 3s electron and it has a binding energy of 31.5 electron volts. So you see that helium 1 radiation is not able to give you information about any of these. We needed UPS for this. These are the only two peaks observable in the helium 2 photoelectron spectrum. The peaks observed in the ESCA are at 250 electron volts that is the 2p these are the core electrons and 326 electron volt which is the uh, 2s electrons again the core. So these are the uh, different kinds of peaks that you can observe using a combination of UPS and ESCA. Now let us see how what more information you can get from this spectrum. We will study the effect of spin orbit coupling. Now if you look at the 2p peak at 250 electron volts what you see is that it is actually a doublet and there are two peaks one is at 248.4 electron volt and the other one is at 250.6 electron volts. This is due to spin orbit coupling because of which 2p5 configuration as we know similar to 2p1, 2p5 will also give rise to 2p3 by 2 and 2, 2p half and the 2, 2p3 by 2 is higher in energy because the 2p orbital is more than half filled. The same splitting should also be observed for the 3p peak but the two states now they are very close to each other so you do not see the splitting they are very close the difference is only about 0.1 electron volts one is at 15.8 the other one is at 15.9 electron volts and you what you see is at the compound peak it merges into one. So this is the photoelectron spectrum of argon and uh, you can see the various peaks. Ionization from the 2s and 3s orbitals results in 3 to s half because in one the orbital the n quantum number the principal quantum number is 2 and in the other one it is 3 and these are uh, the uh, two states which are observed for ar plus dot thus the photoelectron spectrum of argon is completely explained. Now there are two other aspects of photoelectron spectroscopy which uh, you need to understand in order to interpret the spectrum. The first is the relative heights of the peaks. The area under a peak is proportional to the number of electrons in the orbital from which the electron has been ejected. Thus the ratio of areas under the peak arising from ionization of from 3s and 3p orbitals is 1 is to 3. Moreover, since the degeneracy of every j value is 2j plus 1, the areas under the 2p half and 2p 3 by 2 peaks should be in the ratio 1 is to 2. So if you assume that the two peaks have similar shapes, you can relate instead of to the area you can relate it to the height of the peak. So instead of the area we may take the ratios of heights of peaks to determine the relative degeneracies. The relative positions of the two peaks also confirm Hund's third rule according to which the 2p 3 by 2 level should be higher in energy which translates to lower binding energy than 2 2p half since the 2p orbital is more than half filled. Now we come to another aspect of the photoelectron spectrum and this is Kupmann's theorem. This is the third aspect of photoelectron spectroscopy which bridges the gap between experiment and theory. The energy of an electron and the ionized atom is taken as 0 when they are at infinite distance from each other and there is no interaction between the two. As they are brought together the mutual attraction lowers the potential energy. Thus the energy of a bound electron in an orbital is always negative. So this is how we take the scale that the energy of a bound electron will be always negative. Now in order to remove this electron against the attraction of the positively charged ion, it has been removed uh, from the rest of the atom which is a positively charged ion. You need an energy equal to the orbital energy which has to be supplied so that the two move apart and the total energy becomes zero. 
So, the orbital energies can be obtained from quantum mechanical calculations and we may, may write that the ionization or binding energy of an electron is the negative of the orbital energy or ionization energy is equal to minus E of that particular orbital and uh, E i is the orbital energy of the i th atomic orbital. Now, actually this is an approximation and because as we have seen there are two energies associated with a 2p or 3p orbital because of spin orbit coupling. So, which one do you relate to, but there is only one orbital energy. Furthermore, removal of an electron from an atom changes the entire electron distribution and Koopman's theorem does not account for this relaxation of the electronic structure of upon ionization. When you remove the electron, the rest of the atom that is left behind will relax to the most stable uh, kind of energy levels and so this will be different from the original atom which was neutral. So, we can thus assign the entire photoelectron spectrum of an atom. So, here we have given an example. Uh, we want to identify the element in the photoelectron spectrum which is shown here and how do we understand what is this atom. So, we first look at the highest binding energy and this is for the 1s2 electron because this is closest to the nucleus and this peak is at 126 mega joule per mole and this must be from the 1s2 electrons. The next higher peaks are at 9.07 mega joule per mole and 5.31 mega joule per mole and these are associated with 2s2 and 2p6 electrons. And you can see that there is a 1 is to 3 ratio of the two peaks. So, our what we have uh, assigned this assignment is correct and uh, then you have equal heights of the peaks 1 at 126 mega joule per mole and 9.07 mega joule per mole which also confirms that both of them are s electrons. The same height of the peak at 0.74 mega joule per mole also indicates that these are also L s electrons and these two electrons must belong to the 3 s orbital. And because the height is also the same, we can see that there are two electrons in the 3 s orbital. So, we can say that the electron configuration is 1 s 2, 2 s 2, 2 p 6, 3 s 2 which identifies the element as magnesium. So, in this module we have learnt about the photoelectron spectroscopy of atoms. The photoelectron spectroscopy is based on the photoelectric effect which was observed first by Einstein. A photoelectron spectrum is a plot of the number of electrons ejected against the kinetic energies and it can be used to determine the binding energies of the electrons. It is further divided into UPS and XPS depending on the source. The former can be used for ionization of the valence electrons alone, while the latter can ionize both valence and core electrons. Since the ionization of the core electrons and the resultant photoelectron spectra are characteristic of an atom, there is a qualitative aspect and there is a quantitative aspect, XPS can be used to identify elements. The intensities of peaks, that is the peak heights, are also proportional to the concentration of the element also be used for quantitative analysis. It is also known as ESCA. The position of a peak in photoelectron spectroscopy gives the ionization energy of the electron since the energy of the ionization energy and the kinetic energy of the electron and this is what we measure. In photoelectron spectroscopy, the peak height is proportional to the number of electrons in the orbital and finally, the ionization energy is related to the orbital energy through Koopman's theorem which states that it is the negative of the orbital energy. This is an important theorem because it bridges the gap between theory and experiment.